Hi everyone, I hope you're doing well. Due to it being Thanksgiving week in the States, I'm going to move the Candace Leitner episode up by a week. Today will be an episode on two men who had crucial roles in the formation of the first Thanksgiving, Massasoit and Edward Winslow. And then Thursday will be a fun episode on the hero heart of turkey trots. I'd love to hear from you. Please email me your hero heart story by sending it to Mindset Matters Podcast one at gmail.com. That's Mindset Matters Podcast, the number one at gmail.com. Um, that's also the email to use uh, to reach out if the holidays are hard for you and you just want to reach out to a friend, you can write me at that address. Also, please, if you would visit the website at Mindset Matters Podcast One, the numeral one dot com, where you're able to access all of the episodes as well as visit the blog that has pictures that go with each episode. And also there's a microphone there that you can click on to leave a voicemail that will be played on a future episode. You can say whatever is on your heart and mind that would be uplifting to other listeners or answer the prompt, what gives you hope? So I hope you enjoy today's episode. In the heart of the untamed new world, where the whispering winds of change carried the hopes and fears of two vastly different worlds, the extraordinary alliance between Massasoit, the wise and enigmatic Wampanoag leader, and Edward Winslow, the determined pilgrim from across the sea, unfolded against a backdrop of an unforgiving landscape. As their destinies converged in a delicate dance of diplomacy and survival, a tale of friendship, resilience, and the forging of an unlikely bond emerged, one that would shape the course of history and redefine the meaning of unity in the face of adversity. Welcome to Mindset Matters, the courage to continue, the podcast where we explore the extraordinary lives of ordinary individuals who have overcome immense challenges and emerged as beacons of inspiration. I'm your host, Lisa Sinclair, and today we embark on a journey into the remarkable life of two such individuals. This is episode 17, The Courage to Coexist Peacefully, The Hero Hearts of Massasoit and Edward Winslow. Massasoit, the leader of the Wampanoag Nation, deserves more recognition in the historical account of this event than is commonly afforded. While English sources may label him as a king, he actually held the most influential position in a confederation of Wampanoag villages. Massasoit Sachem held the position of Sachem, or leader, within the Wampanoag Confederacy. The term Massasoit translates to Great Sachem, signifying a title rather than a name. Due to a misunderstanding, English colonists erroneously adopted Massasoit as his name, and the misinterpretation persisted. Massasoit played a pivotal role in establishing the initial treaty with the English and it appears he may have been the one to initiate the agreement. This accord, spanning several decades, provided a period of relief for the Wampanoag while the English began to establish their presence. The Wampanoag had a history of interaction with European colonists, engaging in active trade with the settlers of New France and hosting European visitors on their shores for over a century. However, in 1620, English colonists established the first enduring European settlement at Plymouth. Upon arrival, they encountered land that more closely resembled a graveyard than the thriving community it had once been. Records maintained by William Bradford recount the hardships faced by the Wampanoag. After traveling 40 miles from Plymouth to visit Massasoit, the colonists discovered that his dwelling was situated on fertile soil, but the population was sparse. Many had perished, and the community had been severely diminished 
due to the widespread mortality that struck the region approximately three years prior to the arrival of the English, claiming the lives of thousands of Wampanoags. Luckily for Massasoit, the English colonizers who arrived on the Mayflower were woefully unskilled and therefore not a threat to the Wampanoag. Having primarily lived in urban areas in England and the Netherlands before crossing the Atlantic, very few, if any, of the pilgrims possessed the skills needed for hunting or farming. Even when they managed to capture a rabbit or deer, the process of butchering the animal posed its own set of difficulties. Massasoit was likely aware of the challenging conditions faced by the English settlers. In the early days of the Plymouth colony, William Bradford recounted how, quote, the Indians came scouting, end quote, the settlement. These individuals, likely serving as Wampanoag scouts, would have reported their observations to Massasoit. Observing from a safe distance, Wampanoag scouts would have witnessed the harsh reality that the during most challenging months of New England winter, about half of the English settlers succumbed to the scurvy and other diseases brought on by the arduous Atlantic crossing. By the time spring arrived, only approximately 50 of those who disembarked from the Mayflower were still alive. Compensating for their lack of knowledge, experience, and sheer numbers, the colonists relied on their arsenal of guns and powder. While we cannot definitively ascertain Massasoit's thoughts, given the absence of written records, the support of English firepower for his warriors might have appeared to be the best option amid unfavorable circumstances. The Narragansett Nation, the largest indigenous nation in New England during that period, were adversaries of the Wampanoag. They had not suffered the same catastrophic effects of the 1616 plague, benefiting from their geographical isolation. In contrast to their foes, the emaciated English colonists posed little to no threat and securing their firepower would assist the Wampanoag to defend themselves from the Narragansett nation. Recognizing an opportunity, Massasoit and the Wampanoag dispatched an envoy in the early spring, including Samoset, likely chosen for his proficiency in speaking broken English. Massasoit and Edward Winslow, the leader among the English pilgrims, shared a relationship that played a pivotal role in shaping the early years of English colonization in the New England region. Their historic meeting stands as a pivotal moment in the early chapters of American history. This encounter, occurring in March of 1621, unfolded against the backdrop of the fledgling Plymouth colony, with both parties navigating the uncertainties of a new and unfamiliar alliance. The meeting took place in the village of Poconocet, where Massasoit held sway as the paramount leader of the Wampanoag people. As Edward Winslow approached, there was undoubtedly a sense of anticipation and trepidation on both sides, each group facing the unknown with a mixture of curiosity and caution. Despite differences in language, culture, and tradition, Massasoit and Winslow managed to establish a rapport through interpreters, a tentative bridge over the cultural gap. The initial exchanges likely involved ceremonial rituals and diplomatic gestures, with each party carefully gauging the intentions and character of the other. The pivotal moment in this meeting came with the negotiation of the Treaty of Plymouth, a document that would lay the groundwork for a unique and delicate alliance. Through this treaty, Massasoit and Winslow sought to establish a framework for mutual cooperation, emphasizing peace, trade, and a shared understanding of territorial boundaries. This diplomatic accord was a testament to the pragmatic vision of both leaders, recognizing the potential benefits of collaboration in the challenging environment of the early colonial America. In the initial of multiple visits by the Wampanoag delegations, Samoset and his companions, including Tesquantum, 
or more commonly known as Squanto, set the stage for a more structured political negotiation, paving the way for the arrival of their paramount leader, Massasoit. Convinced that mutual cooperation was essential, believing that the English needed them as much as they needed the English, Massasoit negotiated a treaty. The specifics of the treaty, as documented by an eyewitness, were outlined in sixfold terms. The encounter went beyond formal negotiations, as both Massasoit and Winslow extended hospitality to one another. Shared meals and cultural exchanges played a role in fostering a personal connection between these two influential figures. Winslow's later writings provide glimpses into the complexities of these interactions, detailing the challenges and successes of building a relationship across cultural and linguistic divides. It was a diplomatic milestone and the beginning of a nuanced intercultural relationship that would shape the trajectory of English-Native American interactions in the region. While subsequent years would bring challenges and tensions, this initial meeting set a precedent for dialogue and collaboration, offering a glimpse into the potential for understanding and cooperation amid the complexities of colonial expansion. Edward Winslow's writings, particularly his journal titled Good News from New England, provide valuable insights into his observations and interactions with Massasoit. In his journal, Winslow often expressed admiration for Massasoit's leadership and diplomatic skills. He noted the significance of the initial meeting between the English settlers and Massasoit, highlighting the challenges of bridging cultural gaps and the importance of establishing a cooperative relationship for mutual benefit. Winslow detailed the assistance provided by Massasoit and the Wampanoag during the settlers' difficult early days, emphasizing the generosity and support that played a crucial role in the survival of the Plymouth colony. Additionally, Winslow may have touched upon the personal aspects of their interactions, such as shared meals and cultural exchanges, underscoring the efforts to build a meaningful connection beyond diplomatic necessities. One pivotal episode that solidified the bond between Massasoit and Winslow was the Wampanoag's assistance to the struggling pilgrims during their initial harsh winter. Under Massasoit's leadership, the Wampanoag imparted crucial survival skills to the settlers, including techniques for planting crops and fishing, thereby averting the specter of starvation and ensuring the survival of the Plymouth colony. In return, when Massasoit was kidnapped by the Narragansett Nation, Edward Winslow formed a party of men that rescued him. Concerned about the fate of Massasoit, the English, with Winslow among them, mobilized ten armed men. Venturing into Narragansett territory, the English provided assistance to their Wampanoag allies, ensuring Massasoit's safe return. These events underscored the alliance's loyalty to one another. About a year after the Wampanoag and Puritans reached their agreement, the feast that Americans would one day call the First Thanksgiving took place. Massasoit and his people appear in the records the English left of the feast, and though it did not go off as later generations would portray it, this first Thanksgiving started off with a bang. Writing of the event, Winslow recalled, quote, our harvest being gotten in, our governor sent four men on fowling, that so we might, after a special manner, rejoice together, after we had gathered the fruits of our labors. They four in one day killed as much fowl, as with a little help beside, served the company almost a week, at which time, amongst other recreations, we exercised our arms." End quote. This meant they shot off their guns as a form of celebration. 
The Wampanoag likely found the gunfire emanating from the village to be alarming. It suggested that their allies were either under assault or engaged in hostilities against the Wampanoag, both scenarios unacceptable. Consequently, the Wampanoag dispatched a delegation to Plymouth. Winslow recalled how many of the Indians entered the village with their paramount leader, Massasoit, and around 90 men were now intermingled among the colonists who had been celebrating. Continuing to regard Plymouth as their territory and assuming that the Puritan settlers occupied it solely because of Wampanoag goodwill, Massasoit likely found the gunfire emanating from the village to be alarming. It suggested that their allies were either under assault or engaged in hostilities against the Wampanoag, both scenarios unacceptable to Massasoit. Consequently, the Wampanoag dispatched a delegation to Plymouth. Winslow recalled how many of the Indians entered the village with their paramount leader, Massasoit, and around 90 men now intermingled among the colonists who were still celebrating. Recognizing that no danger loomed since the shots were fired in celebration, Wampanoag warriors ventured out and hunted five deer. They presented the game to the Plymouth leaders, including the governor and the captain, marking the commencement of the feast together. The feast between the Plymouth colonists and the Wampanoag, commonly known as the First Thanksgiving, represents a significant and symbolic event in American history. This historic gathering took place in the autumn of 1621 and was a testament to the cooperative relationship that had developed between the English settlers and the indigenous people, particularly under the leadership of Massasoit and figures like Edward Winslow. The feast was not a planned event, but rather emerged as a spontaneous celebration of the successful harvest. The Wampanoag, led by Massasoit, had played a crucial role in helping the Plymouth colonists learn and implement agricultural practices suitable for the New England climate. As a result, the settlers were able to reap a bountiful harvest, and a feast was proposed as a way to express gratitude for the newfound abundance and to celebrate the cooperative spirit that had developed between the two communities. The menu of the first Thanksgiving likely differed from contemporary Thanksgiving feast, but it is believed to have included a variety of foods such as venison, fowl, possibly including turkey, seafood, corn, beans, squash, and other locally sourced ingredients. The meal was likely a blend of English and Native American culinary traditions, reflecting the exchange of knowledge and resources that had occurred between these two groups. The feast was more than just a shared meal. It was a moment of cultural exchange and camaraderie. The Wampanoag, including Massasoit, joined the pilgrims in the celebration, and the event became a symbol of unity and goodwill in a time when cooperation between European settlers and Native Americans was still possible. While the first Thanksgiving had been idealized over the centuries, it remains a reminder of the potential for collaboration and understanding between different cultures. The feast between the Plymouth colonists and the Wampanoag serves as a foundational story in the narrative of American history, emphasizing the importance of shared experiences and cooperation in the face of adversity. If you would like to read more about the first Thanksgiving, I invite you to seek out a primary source called Mort's Relation, Mort being spelled M-O-U-R-T, Mort's Relation. This is written by Edward Winslow, and it includes Winslow's brief undated description of a three-day celebration in the autumn of 1621, after, quote, our harvest being gotten in, end quote, during which the English settlers and a much larger group of Wampanoag friends feast on fowl and deer. Our quote of the day is taken from this primary source from Mort's relation. It is, quote, We often go with them, and they come to us. Some of us have been 50 miles by land in the country with them. We entertain them familiarly in our houses, and they, as friendly, bestowing their venison on us. 
end quote. I hope you enjoyed this recount, um, including the primary source of the first Thanksgiving um, and the special relationship between two very important men that are a little bit unsung in history. Um, we have a lot to learn from them and how they worked together for the common good of both of their interests. I hope you enjoyed today's episode of Mindset Matters, The Courage to Continue. Our next episode will be this Thursday, which is Thanksgiving Day, and it will be a shorter but fun piece on the hero heart of turkey trots. Um, so we hope to see you then. Thank you for giving your time to listen to this episode of Mindset Matters, The Courage to Continue. You are of value. You are loved. You are not alone. If you are struggling with thoughts of suicide, help is available. Dial 988 24 hours a day for free confidential support. If you are not in crisis but need support, please feel free to reach out to me at the email mindsetmatterspodcast numeral one at gmail.com. Again, that's all lowercase mindset matters podcast the numeral one at gmail.com. Remember?